Hello, YouTubers out there. This is Jerry at the Movies. Today I'm going to review Martin Scorsese's Hugo, which won a few technical awards at the Academy Awards, the 84th uh, Annual Academy Awards. Now, silent films received a much-needed shot of adrenaline in 2012. The Artist, the first silent film since 1989's Sidewalks of New York, won Best Picture at the Academy Awards, and reintroduced a form that has not had many antecedents since the early days of cinema. Hugo is also a celebration of a time long forgotten, and infused with humor, heart, and pathos. And just in case you're wondering, it will make you swoon with the power of silent cinema. And if that doesn't do it for you, as a reminder of a certain time, uh, there is even a clip of Harold Lloyd hanging from a clock. So uh, for those of you who love silent cinema, this film is certainly a celebration of it. Based on the inventive multi multimedia book, The Invention of Hugo Cabret, the film Hugo places us squarely in a world that seems ancient and yet so inviting. Hugo Cabret, played by Asia Butterfield, is an orphan living in a Parisian train station who is trying to find a secret to an automaton he keeps inside his living quarters. Now, Hugo is good at fixing mechanisms, having learned the art of it all from his late father, a clockmaker, played by Jude Law. Now, after being cared for by a mean drunk of an uncle, played by Ray Winstone, a watchmaker who disappears, Hugo is left to his own devices and has to do his uncle's job of maintaining the train station's clocks. He keeps a notepad that has a litany of descriptive drawings of all the intricate mechanisms that make the automaton work. All he needs is a heart-shaped key that winds it up. Meanwhile, Hugo tries to evade capture by the relentless station inspector, played by a very daffy Sacha Baron Cohen, and steals tools and other devices from Papa George, played by a very solid Ben Kingsley, a toy shop owner at the train station who was actually the film director, George Méliès. Papa George wants to be left alone, but he is taken with Hugo and his knack and grasp of mechanisms and rotors and such. What is miraculous is that Martin Scorsese made this film. Many cr critics have declared it his most personal work, and it may be, although Scorsese himself has said that his fantastic documentary Italian American, which was about his parents, is his best and most personal work. Scorsese makes it a flight of fancy and wonder, injecting the film with touches of slapstick and providing Hugo with a great deal of subjectivity, as in his observation of little vignettes, such as one man who's smitten with a woman despite a snarling dog, for example. The movie also makes us feel Hugo's insular pain and his sweet relationship with another orphan, the adventurous Isabel, played by Chloe Grace Moretz, who happens to be Papa George's goddaughter. But what really makes the film a work of wonder is seeing the early days of George Méliès making his own films, such as A Trip to the Moon, probably his most famous, and A Glass Castle to allow sunlight to peer in. You definitely sense the man's ability to create magic on film, and not just on the stage with his parlor tricks, since of course he is a magician. This is an extraordinary cast at work here. Asia Butterfield resembles a cross between a young Malcolm McDowell and Daniel Radcliffe. I can only imagine what this kid might have done with a Harry Potter role exuding all the qualities of a tough, determined urchin who discovers the truth about Papa's identity. Chloe Moretz is an affable personality on screen, a girl who is transfixed by the sight of Harold Lloyd at the movies, and who wouldn't be, and transfixed by Hugo's situation. Ben Kingsley is one of our national treasures, an actor who delivers every nuance of regret and remorse, as you might expect, as the elderly Papa George. And adding a layer of towering presences is the one and only Christopher Lee, as a bookshop owner who can't help but elicit a smile when he gives Hugo a French translation of Robin Hood. Plus, there is the small and significant role of fictitious film historian and author René Tabard, played by Michael Stolberg, who currently plays a smooth gambling operator in HBO's Boardwalk Empire, which is also, by the way, produced by Martin Scorsese. And this uh, René Tabard is the one who believed that Georges had died in World War I, Hugo is a movie steeped in the magic of movies. The art design of the station itself is amazing, and in the process of discovery. Between the station inspector's mannered politeness and the choice vignettes of discovered love, which also includes, by the way, the station inspector, the movie is in love with love and with the cinema. It restores in good faith what cinema ultimately was and what it can still be, a place of dreams that could still make you go wow. 
Scorsese is at the top of his directorial powers and makes Hugo a valentine for the most impassioned filmgoer and cineist. And it's a masterstroke in the director's inarguably varied career. For those of you who think he's only made gangster films, not so. You'll come away smiling and in a cheery, heartfelt mood, something I never quite expected from Martin Scorsese. Bravo, I say. And that's my review, and this is Jerry the Movies, signing off.